Dermoid cyst, a benign developmental choristoma, is the most common orbital tumor of childhood known to be arising from ectodermal sequestration along the lines of embryonic fusion of mesodermal processes. Approximately 80% of dermoid cysts are found in the head and neck region, amounting to 3-9% to of all orbital masses. Dermoid cysts are slowly expanding in nature due to the constant desquamation of epidermal lining and secretions of dermal glandular elements. Cytopathologically, the cyst is lined by keratinizing stratified squamous epithelium with the lumen containing a collection of laminated keratin debris or hair shafts or sebaceous glands and sweat glands. Dermoids can be classified as sutural, anterior orbital, deep or posterior orbital, intraosseous, transorbital and conjunctival being for niche or epibulbar. They predominantly occur in the superotemporal quadrant at the frontozygomatic suture or superonasally along the frontolacrimal suture as asymptomatic, painless, well-defined, cystic, compressible, smooth, mobile, subcutaneous masses with or without proptosis, dystopia, ptosis, diplopia or oscillopsia on mastication which occurs in dumbbell dermoids. The symptoms depend on the depth and extent and they might rupture spontaneously inciting an inflammatory reaction leading to preceptal or orbital inflammation. MRI shows rounded lesions with variable isointense material in the lumen with gadolinium enhancement of the cyst wall. CT scan with bone window is necessary to outline the bony involvement for a decision on the most appropriate surgical approach, especially in posterior dermoids and dumbbell or hourglass dermoids. Conservative observation may be adopted as these cysts are small, asymptomatic and are not a cosmetic blemish. However, with functional and cosmetic implications and the possibility of spontaneous or traumatic rupture, surgical excision becomes the treatment of choice. The ideal goal of such surgery is complete removal without rupture. Here is a 4-year-old girl who presented to us with angular dermoid occurring in the superonasal area for cosmetic reasons without any visual symptoms. A skin incision is marked over the site of dermoid after palpation along the relaxed skin tension lines. The skin incision is made with an 11 number Bart Parker blade and anterior layers are dissected with a blunt tenotomy scissors. Change in the section plane is evident by the change in color. Anterior dermoids are easy to excise if sutural extension is limited and should not be missed as it can sometimes be subtle tethering. Meticulous dissection is carried out all around the cyst and the thin wall of these dermoids should be kept in mind to avoid intraoperative rupture, especially near the sutural areas where the tissue gets pinched. If the cysts are not mobile, they are often attached to the neighboring structures like trochlea in the superonasal region, palpable lobe of the lacrimal gland in the superotemporal region, and can sometimes be extra cavitary, extending to paranasal sinuses and temporal fossa. After dissection of all the peripheral adhesions, the lesion is securely prolapsed anteriorly with cryostabilization and the pedicle is dissected out. Hemostasis is achieved and orbicularis is sutured with 6-0 vicryl. And skin is sutured with interrupted 6-0 silk sutures, keeping cosmesis in mind. Complications like periosteal or sutural tether, bony erosion, fistula formation and risk of intraoperative rupture should be borne in mind. Surgical management for different dermoids is individualized. Here are a few examples of different methods of surgical resection. Posterior or deeply seated dermoids cannot be easily excised completely and can cause continuous bony destruction and recurrent inflammation. In such cases, marsupialization of the dermoid with meticulous removal of the epithelial lining is the recommended alternative. While extensive surgery with end block excision is an option, a recent alternative 
For dumbbell dermoids can be minimally invasive form sclerotherapy with an anionic surfactant sodium tetradecal sulfate with a concentration of 30 mg per ml. Under local anesthesia, the perimeter and epicenter of the lesion are marked and a white bore 18 gauge needle is used to aspirate out the contents of the cyst ensuring complete collapse. Here four cc of contents were aspirated and one cc of sodium tetradecal sulfate was taken for foaming it to 2 cc by modified tesari tubion technique while the foam is being generated the needle should be kept in place within the lesion the sclerosant of desired quantity is then injected we have seen excellent aesthetic results with this technique to conclude Orbital dermoids if stable can be observed with patient counseling and reassurance. If surgery is essential for cosmetic and functional indications, these are ideally treated with complete excision wherever possible with an aesthetically appropriate approach. And when complete excision is not feasible, adequate measures must be taken to avoid recurrence.